Good morning. The Lord's blessings to all of you this day, this special day. Uh, we have uh, many blessings to uh, receive the Lord's word, his gospel, the preaching, and we get to be uh, enlightened and in the presence of a miracle of the sacrament of baptism today. We give thanks that Andre Anderson will be brought to the font of holy baptism this day uh, and given the life-giving Holy Spirit, uh, and we get to be in witness of that. Uh, thanks be to God. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Holy Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings you give us in this life, uh, for house and home, food and drink, all who need support this bodily life, for children, for a heritage, a legacy. We're thankful for all these things that you give us. We come before you today, Lord, and we ask you yet to feed us again. Uh, let your name be praised. Let it be blessed and hallowed in this place. Uh, let your word be preached so that we might be fed uh, the gospel, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. This day, Lord, feed us with good things so that we can go out into the world and share that blessed name. Speak it without fear and bless the world because your name is a blessing. May we speak your name into the world. Let us be your chosen instruments to do that wonderful and beautiful task. Fill us up with good things today, and Lord, in the sight of your miraculous sacrament of baptism, uh, leave us in awe and dumbfounded at your great grace and mercy for us every day. We pray all this in Christ's name. His will be done in our lives daily. Amen. We sing our first hymn. You'll find the Order of Holy Baptism on page 268 of your Lutheran service book, if you'd like to follow along. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. 
We will be lost forever unless delivered from death, sin, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you named? <clears throat> Andre, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you will behold Andre according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being prepared, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he will be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Andre as sponsors in the Christian faith? Answer by saying yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and bless them. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we would have the sponsors, parents, and even the congregation give answer to these things, and maybe, just maybe, Andre will give answer too. Yeah? Okay. Andre, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, I believe. Andre, Andre, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. <clears throat> All right. You ready? I don't have the whole That's okay. Andre, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Off a little bit. You can use that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wipe yourself off. <clears throat> the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment to show that you've been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So, so shall you stand without fear before Christ's judgment seat to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Be careful. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us, of all the treasures of heaven in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most, most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Andre the new birth and the holy baptism, and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. <clears throat> Here's the box for that. I'll give this and that. And this little book to read on his baptismal birthday. It's nice. And then... Um, baptismal certificate as well. Thank you. Lord bless you guys return your seat. <clears throat> Please stand. If you're following along in your hymnal, we are in the service of prayer and preaching, which is found on page... I'll get there. 260. This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your truth. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord God is my strength and my song. <coughs> In that day, give thanks to the Lord. 
call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. His name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Please be seated. Our readings for today focus around the Good Samaritan and this understanding that Jesus has uh, that we love our neighbor as ourself. You'll see that verse actually come out in Leviticus here today in our Old Testament lesson because Jesus is quoting it here to speak about what a Christian person does. And one of the things that we might focus on too is that Christ is not interested in outward appearances or ch crossing off checks and boxes, the mere minimum requirements, but what he wants is to look inward and change our hearts before him. So, we begin with Leviticus. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, you shall not deal falsely, you shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely. <clears throat> And so profane the name of, the, of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossa, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Ephephras, our beloved fellow servant. 
He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before you stand, I might ask, before you stand, are the men ready to sing? Just a little longer. Okay. Why don't we plan to sing before the sermon then? Okay. Please stand. Our gospel today is taken from Luke chapter 10. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. We now turn to our psalm. Uh, the psalms are in the front part of the handle if you'd like to have them in front of you. Otherwise, they're on the screens right there in front of you. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him up to the will of the Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. My enemies say of me in malice, when will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friends in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his head against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may be repay them. For this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. At this time, why don't we be seated, and we'll have our musical selection. <clears throat>
Please stand. Forever, O oh, <clears throat> oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house. Being as though we've had uh, the baptismal service today, we will just recite the Ten Commandments, and then our special commandment for today, the Second Commandment. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the Lord your God. By keeping it holy, honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. If it's your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, thing that belongs to your neighbor. We turn now to the second commandment. We speak the meaning as well. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Maybe may be seated. Children, come forth, please, for a children's message. Come on up. <clears throat> Can you see? There's the man of the hour right there, too. Come on up here, bud. Oh. What's this little guy's name? Do you remember? Andre. That's right. What happened to Andre today? He was baptized. Now, let me, let me ask you something. Does this water look special in here? Why don't you go ahead and put your fingers in it? What does it feel like? It feels like regular water, doesn't it? But what happened today when we washed Andre with water and we said in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? What happened? What happened to him? Huh? The Holy Spirit came to live in his heart. He was claimed as a child of God. He became an heir to all the blessings of forgiveness and salvation in Jesus Christ. It was a miracle. You know, there's a picture out in the lobby, maybe today after church you can go check it out. It's in the lobby out here. It's a new picture. And it's a picture of Jesus reaching down through the water. And it's from Peter's perspective when he sunk on the waves. Peter went out to the wa on the water to walk with Jesus and he sunk, right? And he's under the water and he's looking up and he's seeing Jesus walk on the water and reaching down through that water and grabbing him and pulling him out of that water. And you know what? That's what each and every one of you experienced and saw. The forgiveness and salvation of Jesus Christ reaching out through water and it reached out and grabbed each and every one of you and gave you eternal life and forgiveness and salvation. And that is such a blessing. This is just water. And we speak normal, we speak words, but they're powerful words. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, as Christ commanded us, that we do in the Gospel of Matthew. And by, by uh, honoring the Lord's sacrament and doing as he has asked us to do and using water and word, Andre has become a child of God and an heir of heaven forever. And that is an amazing blessing that not only Andre has experienced, but every one of you as well. Thanks be to God. Why don't we... Uh, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings, especially the blessing of baptism, which makes as children of God. Uh, we especially thank you for calling Andre to faith today through the miracle of water and word in your fond holy baptism. We ask that you would continue to remind us of the thing that you've done for us. You've given us eternal life and salvation through water and word. Help us never forget that. We pray all this in Christ's name. And all God's people said,
Amen. Don't go so soon. You can do two things. Number one, you can come over here and you can take one candy on your way home. And don't forget to dip your fingers in the water and then sprinkle your parents and say, remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Yeah? And we will continue with our sermon here. Our sermon today is taken from a uh, 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 verse for consideration, verse 12 from our Old Testament lesson. You shall not swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. 
Today we'll be speaking about the second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings today focus around the main gospel message of the Good Samaritan. And, you know, you've probably heard this message so many times you could, you could repeat it in your sleep. Uh, it's just out there in pop culture as well as it comes up at our lectionary often. We know this one backwards and forwards. But there was one thing I thought that was interesting today that I noticed. Maybe I hadn't seen before. The Lord corrects the lawyer who asks him. That the whole parable is motivated by this question. And who is my neighbor? They have this conversation, and the Lord agrees with the man, the lawyer. Oh, yeah, you know, you should love love your neighbor as yourself. You do all these things. That's exactly right. But now the lawyer wants to justify himself. And behind that question, behind that word justify, lurks a worldview, okay? Justify means I want to calculate up what it's going to take and make the effort, fill in the blanks myself. That's what the lawyer means when he says he, he wishes to justify himself. There lurks a worldview. Perhaps my neighbor or the one I will help is the, is the one who is like me. He's a Jew. He's a Pharisee. He's a lawyer or a scribe. If you think about it clearly, the man is only willing to do what's required of him. He knows exactly how he's supposed to serve by following the Ten Commandments. And now he wants to know exactly who he's supposed to serve. So we can put a neat little box around all of it and know exactly what he's supposed to do, exactly what's required of him, and then fulfill it as though he could do that. This is not the point of Jesus. The gospel is going to change everything because salvation will come from outside. As a gift. No longer will I work, look at the works that I do to save you, but now I will look at Christ and know what are my works for? What is my life for? Christ wants us to look inside. We now belong to Jesus. God's commands help us understand what kind of people we are to be. What our lives look like. How they can best reflect Christ's love. And it's from this perspective that Leviticus 1 through 2 and 9 through 18 may have something to teach us, to show us. I love all these verses. They're very strange. I love talking about them. This idea of leaving stuff in the field, leaving things on the edges. It's the support system. It's the welfare of the day. It's to take care of people who can't take care of themselves. And so it wasn't a governmental agency. It wasn't the king. It was people taking care of other people. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All these commands are kind of saying the same thing in this section from Leviticus. But they all kind of end with this little tagline, I am the Lord. It says, you will do this, I am the Lord, which seems very strange. We're missing the first two verses of the chapter. And I'm going to read those for you today. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, Holy you will be, because holy am I, Yahweh, your God. So every time he says, I am the Lord your God, at the end of these things, he's saying, You'll be holy, because I am holy. Which is amazing. Right? Our holiness doesn't come from how well we do these things. Our holiness comes from God. Thanks be to God. The commands in Leviticus 19 pertain to almost every aspect of Israelite life. And by commanding such a, a wide swath, so many different kinds and so many different places, he covers almost the entire sphere of human life. Every action has ramifications for the relationship between God and human beings. And all commands are on the same footing. One is not more important than the other. Holy you will be is the theme of the chapter. What follows in the chapter is the elaboration of the theme, what it means to be holy. Being that today is our opportunity as well, we are preaching through the entire catechism. We did the first commandment about a month ago. We we're working on the second commandment today. I thought it might be good for us to focus on verse 12. You shall not swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of the Lord, of your God, I am the Lord. 
And this is a portion, not the whole second commandment, but a portion of the second commandment. In the second commandment, we have clear actions that we should not partake in. We've, uh, and hopefully, from your confirmation study, you can still remember these things. We shouldn't use God's name carelessly because it carries great weight. That's, I think, the, the overarching, the big theme in, in the second commandment. We should not use God's name carelessly. It's hugely important. I'd like to read for you a section from the large catechism from Luther. And it's great. I hope you like it. I really enjoy it. Although that, that happens a lot. I enjoy things that people don't like. But we'll see. Calling on God's name is also a blessed and useful habit and very effectual against the devil who is ever about us and lies in wait to bring us into sin and shame, calamity and trouble, but who is very loath to hear God's name and cannot remain long where it is uttered and called upon from the heart. And indeed, many a terrible and shocking calamity would befall us if, by calling upon his name, God did not preserve us. I have myself tried it and learned by experience that often sudden great calamity was immediately averted and removed during such invocation. Invocation meaning calling on the Lord's name. Yeah. To vex the devil. That's, isn't that a great medieval word? Right? To vex the devil, I say we should always have his holy name in our mouth so that he may not be able to injure us, the devil, as he wishes. Now, by the way, I want you to lock away, if you have inside of you right now a feeling of incredulity or you almost want to laugh at that statement, I want you to lock that away. We're going to get to it later. I myself have transgressed God in this way. I have used his name, which Luther tells us, Luther shows us from Scripture, is incredibly weighty and important. I've used it carelessly, and I've also used it in my anger. Shame on me. But his name is his character. Where his name is, there he is as well. We certainly should use God's name, as Luther says, but not callously and not recklessly. The second commandment also teaches us that God's name should never be used for evil, whether in incantations and magic. And I know that seems very strange to us in the world that we live in, but it's true. You may not know this. A lot of witchcraft, of wicked spells need or include God's name in them to make them work. It, it, I know it's, it just seems foreign and crazy, but it's, it's true. It actually happens. And it happened in Luther's day as well. That's why in the commandment he puts, don't use the Lord's name in witchcraft. Well, that's what this is all about. Yeah, happens even today. Uh, we shouldn't use God's name uh, in oaths that we do not mean. When we say things like, I swear to God I didn't do it. when well, we did. Yeah. I swear to God I'm telling the truth when we're not. Or I swear to God I'll be there and we flake out. Yeah, raise your hand if you ever flaked out before. Yeah. It's a melancholy thing for a pastor to have people come forward, go through the rite of confirmation, take oaths, not to me, not to this church, to God himself with no intent of keeping them. It's, it, you, I know sometimes you bemoan it. I know probably you bemoan people in your life who've done it. You have no idea what it means as a pastor who've taught these kids for three years in a row. It's the pits. This is an affront to God. And this is what Jesus means when he says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. He doesn't mean never take an oath. He means take oaths and keep them. Don't make oaths you have no intention of keeping. Don't, don't say things you don't mean. Let us not pull God down and his name and involve it in our deceit and our lies, but instead let us pray praise and give thanks. Now, with that thing locked away in your head from before, and I want to read you something else, okay? I want to see what happens in your minds as you hear this stuff. On the other hand, this is from Luther again, small, of large catechism. There should be constant, uh, he's talking about children now. He's talking about how we should teach children. On the other hand, they should be constantly urged and incited to honor God's name and to have it always upon their lips in everything that may happen to them or come to their notice. For that is the true honor of his name, to look to it and implore it for all consolation. So that, as we have heard above, first the heart by faith gives God the honor due to him, and afterwards the lips by confession. 
For this end, it is also of service that we form the habit of daily commending ourselves to God with soul and body, wife, children, servants, and all that we have against every need that may occur. Whence also the blessing and thanksgiving at meals and other prayers morning and evening have originated and remain in use. In other words, we should be praying before our meals, praying in a daily manner to thank God and to use his name. Likewise, the practice of children to cross themselves when anything monstrous or terrible is seen or heard and to exclaim, Lord God, protect us, help us, dear Lord, etc. Thus too, if anyone meets with unexpected good fortune, however trivial, trivial, yeah, that he say, God be praised and thanked. This God has bestowed on me. As formerly the children were accustomed to fast and pray to St. Nicholas and other saints. And isn't that crazy that they, they fasted and prayed to St. Nicholas way back then in the 1600s. And now the kids still write letters and fast and pray to St. Nicholas. <laughs> and, uh, it's just a thought. Anyway. Um, they're accustomed to fast and pray to St. Nicholas and other saints. This would be more pleasing uh, thanking God and making the sign of the cross and, and giving thanks to Jesus, would be more pleasing and acceptable to God than all monasticism and Carthusian sanctity. And if you're wondering, I don't even know what Carthusian sanctity means either, so don't worry about it. Now here's the thing. After hearing all of that, right? Whenever an evil befalls you, maybe someone falls down on the playground, skins their knees, we make the sign of the cross, Lord, let not this thing befall us, Right? You're probably all thinking to yourself, this is crazy. This is, this is insane. To make the sign of the cross during the day when evil comes? To thank the Lord Jesus when good things happen? Like we get an extra meatball in our meatball sub? To call upon God's name in our problems and our joys? Why, what would the neighbors think? I'm amazed at how often our family goes out and prays, and how strange a thing. It, it, I, and you maybe experience it too, where you're praying and people are, like, now they stare at you. They kind of wonder, like, what's going on? Or it's a novelty, or it's just an oddity. It's strange, right? <clears throat> we go out and pray, and people think it's so strange. And by the way, I do think, I do think you should pray a blessing before your meals, even in public. Give thanks to God, even in public. But it, it points to a larger issue. It connects the second commandment back to the first. Are we afraid to mention God's name in public? Are we afraid to call on it often and always? If so, what are we putting our trust in? In God or in remaining in the good social graces of our neighbor? As long as we don't offend anyone, as long as we don't make a scene we'll be all right. As long as we don't look any different from anyone else, well, everything will be okay. Perhaps you have used God's name carelessly like me. Perhaps you have even used it to support an oath or a statement you knew to be a lie or had no intention of keeping. But I think the place where the second commandment squarely hits us right in the head is about being afraid to speak and call on God's name, as Luther says, in every trouble, pray praise and give thanks. I hear this often. I'll go and meet with people. They might have a cold. And I say, well, let's pray about it. And then they'll say, can you guess where I'm going? Oh, it's just a cold, Pastor. We don't need to pray about this. Well, that's not what Luther says. This is in every trouble, in every trial, at all times, pray praise and give thanks. Only some of our troubles seem appropriate. Only some of our troubles are worthy. Only some things are worth giving thanksgiving for. Only the big things. Pish posh. I've always wanted to use that in a sermon too. God asks us to call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm 50 verse 15. Of this sin, of this fear, you know, it's a strange thing. People in other countries, they're worried about getting their heads lopped off. We're worried about making a scene. Of this we must repent. We must repent. But fear not, people of God. You have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have been set free to be His people. You have been chosen in the waters of baptism and set on solid ground. Our God has made you His people through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. 
He has placed the lack of faith, those sins of deceit and falsehood, he's placed them on the Redeemer. God has freed you from all fear and doubt. You don't need to worry about what people might say. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. What's the worst that could happen? I always have to remember this myself. What's the worst that could happen when I ask someone to serve? What's the worst that could happen when I ask someone to come to church? What's the worst that could happen when I offer someone the gospel? They might say no. They might say something mean. I've been in traffic in Sioux Falls. People have said mean things to me before. What might happen? They might make fun of us. They might even persecute us for calling on God's name, as Luther says, in every trouble. Luther once said, World, death, devil, hell, away! And leave me in peace. You have no hold on me. If you will not let me live, then I will die. But you won't succeed in that. Chop my head off. It won't harm me. I have a God who will give me a new one. You are God's people. Forgiven in Christ. Do not be afraid. Use God's name in every trouble. Pray praise and give thanks. Amen. We now continue with our offer. Lord, bless this offering that it might be used in this place and all places to further your kingdom and to do your work. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially remember Janet, Oliver, Larry, Joe, Henry, Lois, Dolores, Luis, Mary, Lonnie, Marge, Betty, Florence, Jeannie, Norma, and Marilyn. We also remember Dave, Madeline, Byron, Robin, Belinda, Evelyn, Ann, Betty, Sarah, Micah, Vanita, Colby, Ashlyn, Marvin, Kathy, and Larry. We remember, <clears throat> remember those who are dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially remember the family of Homer Lott, and we also remember the family of Ruby Crow, who passed away recently. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are persecuted because they believe in Jesus Christ and confess that wonderful name of God to the world, especially we pray for those Christians in North Korea, Nigeria, and Turkey. Let us pray to the Lord. For our people of our Redeemer, that we would be willing to share that good name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with the world around us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are in the way of Hurricane Barry, those who are struggling with great rains and flooding, please, Lord, keep them safe and Speed the efforts of reconstruction and, and uh, rescuing those who are in danger. Let us pray to the Lord. We give thanks that you have given the healthy birth of Luca, son, to Andrew and Miranda, Miranda Stanga. Keep him safe until the day when they come to this font and we receive him as a brother and member in Christ through holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray the call of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Finally, for these and for... Uh, <clears throat> Blessed Lord, you've caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit... One God now and forever. Amen. We pray Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil. Doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <clears throat> Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Sacrificed, raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead.
Christ dies to sin once for all, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and preserve you all. Amen. You may see it for our closing hymn. Lord's blessings to all of you, especially Lord's blessings upon Andre and the whole Wilson family and the whole crew. Congratulations and God's blessings, and we're so thankful to be part of this wonderful thing today. Um, a couple of announcements. Don't forget, the, um, the entire congregation is invited to attend the birthday party on July 17th at 5.30. So these birthday parties are not just for the folks who have July birthdays, but for the whole congregation to celebrate those who have July birthdays. So if you can do that, we greatly appreciate it. Don't forget that coming up this week, we're having pork chop and coob uh, at my house. It's a very amazing uh, title. I'm still I'm just, I, I'm so amazed I came up with it. It's so creative. Um, so that's, that's on Friday. Uh, we're gonna start around 5.30 p.m. and, and we'll, we'll quit when the cops break it down. Yeah. When they, kick, when they kick everyone out, I don't know. Maybe, we'll probably quit before that. It'll be hot, so we probably won't set up that late. Um, uh, so please uh, be, um, enjoy coming and visiting us. We'd love to have everyone uh, be in the house. And, and, and uh, uh, men, uh, uh, Guy's Garage is uh, coming up July 23rd at my place. And if you haven't been to Guy's Garage, it's a lot of fun. We, we get together. Uh, we build stuff, we break stuff, we cut stuff apart with grinders and things. Um, we drink some beverages and we raise incense to the Lord in forms of cigars, so it's fabulous. Uh, if you want to join us, uh, please feel free. The announcement's right there, the address is right there. It's Tuesday the 23rd at 6, 6 or 6.30? 6.30, we'll see you then. And this Tuesday we have our, uh, uh, our Trap Club uh, event coming up again for July. 
you want to come out and shoot, uh, shoot trap, uh, we'll be at Crooks Gun Club. Um, and I have information sheets on the back ledger if you'd like one of these. It gives you all kinds of information on what you need to bring, what you need to have. But um, uh, Crooks Gun Club, July 16th at 6 p.m. And we are doing kind of a potluck this time because John made us some hot dogs and whatnot last time. So maybe bring a, a hot dish or a dessert to share, uh, uh, like a side dish. Uh, and we'll, 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 we'll have some food and together, some fellowship together. And then we'll blow up some clay pigeons together. That's always fun. Um, the Lord's blessings as we continue his kingdom work, his kingdom field. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Don't forget we have Bible study today as well. Pastor Morfitt is working further into Hebrews. What chapter are you on right now? Twelve. Oh, you're nearing the end there. All right. And I'm on Revelation today. Uh, you can join us either in the lounge or downstairs in the fellowship hall. I love you all very much. There's not a thing you can do about it. Lord's blessings to each and every one of you.